On the 14th of March 2020, a 23-year-old Ghanaian domestic worker, Faustina Tay, died in a southern suburb of Beirut, Lebanon. She had worked for Hussein Dia and his wife, Mona Nasarala, for 10 months before her death. Her death was horribly reported by the police as suicide until an uproar was raised when allegations that she was tortured and murdered surfaced. The controversy surrounding the cause of death and how she died is not uncommon. Faustina, like millions of other Africans, was a victim of a modern day system of slavery, which is practiced in the Gulf region called the Kafala system. So what led to Faustina's death? What is the Kafala system? Welcome to the Sankofa Pan-African series. Please subscribe and turn on your notification buttons if you haven't. Also, please support us by pledging a token amount to this channel through Patreon so that we can continue to bring you videos like this one. And no amount you pledge is too little. Thank you. According to This is Lebanon, TIL, which is a project of uh, Domestic Workers Unite. Um, Domestic Workers Unite is a coalition of former migrant workers and activists who are demanding the protection of migrant workers and an end to labor exploitation and abuse. So during the week before her death, Faustina Tay sent dozens of texts and over 40 minutes of voice messages to TIL, this is Lebanon, and her brother in Ghana. So TIL has documented many cases of abuse, enslavement, and even death of domestic workers in Lebanon. The texts and voice messages sent by Faustina Tay are available on the TIL website. So just look for it. This is Lebanon, TIL. Look for their website. So take some time to check out the website because the texts of uh, Faustina's messages provide detailed accounts of recurrent physical abuse by the Lebanese couple that she worked for under the Kafala system. I will um, deliberate on the Kafala system shortly. But first, let us look at Faustina Tay's life and how she ended up in Lebanon. Now, Faustina was a hardworking and ambitious young woman who, like many others, dreamt of pursuing her studies. Unfortunately, after graduating from the Krobo Girls, uh, Krobo Girls Senior High School, she was unable to pursue her post-secondary education because her family could not afford um, to sponsor her. She therefore first tried to make a living by selling noodles in Accra, Ghana. But as most of us from the economic south will attest, that kind of small trading is like a road which leads to nowhere. Selling noodles will barely keep a person alive. So she was then forced to take a route that many other young Africans forced, uh, who are faced with a bleak future have been forced to take. Determined to earn money so that she could further her education, Faustina ended up as a domestic worker in Lebanon. We do not have the details of how harrowing her journey there was or the kind of sacrifices that she had to make in order to get to Lebanon. But we can only imagine. She arrived in Lebanon 
on the 5th of May 2019 and was hired as a maid by the dear family in Beirut. She was contracted to earn a paltry $200, which was supposed to be paid at the end of every month. However, her employers began delaying payments for two or three months at a time before paying her. A frustrated Faustina, who, had, who still had faith in the contract that she signed with the dear family, requested to leave in the hope that she might find a better um, alternative. Her request to leave was not simply rejected, but she became she was subjected to brutal beatings, sexual abuse, and various forms of violence at the hands of different members of this family before she eventually died. Apparently, it is common practice among employers of Africans and other migrant workers under the kafala system to withhold salary of their employees for months at a time and brutalize them. Please, I keep urging you, take the time to visit the website of This is Lebanon, which also has extensive recordings from other abused migrant workers. This is something that the world needs to get involved in. It needs to be stopped. So what is the kafala system? Well, the kafala system is, a, is supposed to be a legal framework which define and regulates the relationship between migrant workers and their employers in countries like Lebanon. Uh, Jordan and all Arab Gulf states except Iraq. It was created to provide cheap labor in an era of booming economic growth uh, for the countries uh, that practice it. Now, the system is highly controversial because it is rife with exploitation. The kafala system lacks any proper regulations and protections for migrant workers, uh, uh, for the rights of migrant workers. And it relies on low wages, poor working conditions, and employee abuse, as well as racial discrimination and gender-based violence. The word kafala comes from Islamic jurisprudence, on legal guardianship and mat and other matters. The modern system started in the early 20th century in, in, in Gulf states in order to regulate the treatment of foreign workers in the pearl industry and other commercial trades. The system was then expanded in the 1950s when newly rich Gulf countries needed foreign laborers to work on large-scale infrastructural projects because they had so much, suddenly had so much money, they were embarking on a lot of infrastructural projects and they needed people to work uh, for them. This was because given, the, and then, given their small populations, they needed additional temporary workers who would come during periods of booming growth and return home when the economy weakened. The Gulf countries felt it necessary to protect themselves from local expatriates who sometimes became the majority of their population. The kafala system quickly evolved into a most inhumane practice. And according to Houghton Homayampo, head of the Qatar office of the International Labor Organization, ILO, and uh, I'm going to quote him. They would bring in workers from abroad that didn't speak the language, that were not aware of the cultural sensitivities, that came without a social support network. The sponsor was supposed to take care of them, ensure their safety, ensure their well-being, and over time, because of various changes to legislation, this became a power imbalance between workers 
and employers and eventually opened the workers to abuse. End of quote. Initially, the, the system mostly favored Arab workers from nearby countries such as Egypt. But after the oil boom of the 1970s, Gulf countries turned to non-Arab workers, especially those from South Asia, due to a desire for cheaper labor and fears that Arab expatriates would spread a pan-Arab ideology that could undermine Gulf monarchies. Non-Arab workers then outnumbered Arab workers after the first Gulf War, when some 2 million Egyptians, Palestinians, and Yemenis were expelled from the region because of their government's support for Iraq's uh, invasion of Kuwait. Now, on paper, the kafala or sponsorship system is supposed to define the relationship between foreign workers and their local sponsor. Under the kafala system, the state gives local individuals or companies sponsorship permits to employ foreign laborers. In Bahrain, for example, the system is so ingrained that it is a government agency, which is actually the employer or worker's sponsor. Under the Kafala system, the sponsor covers the travel expenses and cost of housing, often in dormitory-like accommodations for non-domestic workers. Whilst in the case of domestic workers, the workers are housed in the sponsor's home. Sadly, in most cases, rather than hire individuals directly, sponsors sometimes collude with private recruitment agencies in the countries of origin of the workers to find workers and facilitate their entry to the host country. So one of the problems with the kafala system is that it fails it falls under the jurisdiction of um, the of interior ministries rather than labor ministries as a result of this migrant workers have no protection under the host country's labor law this makes them vulnerable to abuse and exploitation as it denies them the right to enter a labor dispute where a labor dispute process or even join a, a, a union. They're not allowed to even join unions. Also, because workers' employment and residency visas are linked and only sponsors can renew or terminate them, the system allows private citizens rather than the state to control the legal status of the workers. This creates a power imbalance that sponsors exploit in most situations. Workers need their sponsor's permission to change jobs, end employment, and enter or exit the host country. So leaving the workplace without the permission of the employer is an offense that results in the termination of the worker's legal status, and it can result in imprisonment or deportation. Even if the worker is fleeing abuse, workers have no recourse whatsoever in the face of exploitation, which is why the system has been described by many experts as modern day slavery. The kafala system is practiced in the Gulf Corporation Council, GCC countries, and the United um, Arab Emirates, as well as Jordan and Lebanon. Sadly, a lot of African youths who are forced by the increasingly difficult economic circumstances of their home countries continue to fall victims to this vicious kafala system. It is the same warped global economic system which drives young Africans across the desert 
and perilous transatlantic journeys towards an elusive life in Europe. Under the Kafala system, employers regularly confiscate passports, visas, and phones, and they also they confine domestic workers in their homes. In other words, they imprison them in their homes. Non-domestic workers often live in overcrowded dorms, which have become especially dangerous during this coronavirus pandemic. Often, kafala workers are forced into debt, a kind of debt bondage. This is because although most host countries require employers to pay recruitment fees, these often get passed on to the workers who then take on, who have to who take out loans in order uh, to pay for them to, uh, uh, and by taking out those loans, they then become indebted to their recruiters. Employee, employers also sometimes redu reduce or withhold workers' wages, you know, uh, I, 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 and they do so, they, they claim to do so because they say they need to pay off recruiters. Uh, but often they just do it to punish the workers. Now, the Kafala system encourages forced labor because recruiters use deception or coercion to entice workers who then end up being forced to do the kind of work that they did not bargain for. The contract uh, substitution is also a common tactic that is used to commit workers to accept poor wages and horrible working conditions by signing multiple contracts, often in languages that they don't understand. And once the workers are entrapped, sponsors can then sell their visa to another employer while remaining the official sponsor. The new employer is therefore not under any obligation to keep the same terms as the original one. The new employer can then force the worker to take on different types of work or lower wages. It's, it's, it's all very, very disturbing. The system also forces workers to depend on sponsors to remain in the country legally because sponsors can invalidate their status for any reason. Most of these workers often take jobs that nationals of the Gulf countries find undesirable for financial or cultural reasons, such as construction, domestic work, or uh, in, serv in, 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 or in service in some uh, industries. They also earn less than locals. White collar workers and, and those from Western countries, of course, generally receive better treatment. I thought racism often magnifies the inhumane treatment of darker skinned African workers. And the 2020 UN report on racism in Qatar you know, actually found that foreign workers of all income levels reported that their salaries depended on their countries of origin and that despite possessing professional degrees, some migrant workers reported being relegated to low-income jobs most commonly linked to and occupied by workers of their racial or ethnic group. It's, it's, it's just sickening. So it doesn't matter what their qualification is, you know, their, their country of origin or their skin color will determine the kind of jobs that they're given or the kind of salaries that they earn. In the same way, gender-based discrimination also plays out in the kafala system. The gendered abuses of the kafala system are especially worrisome given that in some countries, such as Lebanon, women compose the majority of kafala workers. 
So domestic workers, usually women, face the most abuse, including sexual violence. But victims often do, do not report, you know, out of fear of uh, their sponsors or the danger that they can be charged with crime because certain countries such as Kuwait and Qatar have imposed female workers and have imprisoned uh, female workers for engaging in extramarital sex, even in cases of rape. So a female domestic worker who is being sexually abused is in a CAC 22 situation. She can't leave and she cannot report because she might be imprisoned uh, uh, for having engaged in extramarital affairs. So what should be done to stop this? I, I believe that the Middle East lags behind other regions in ratifying international agreements that protect workers. This needs to change. For example, no host country has ratified the ILO's Domestic Workers Convention, which commits signatories to setting a minimum wage, eliminating uh, forced labor, and ensuring decent working conditions, among other uh, forms of uh, protections. Even where laws do protect workers, they are often poorly enforced. The countries that practice this odious system should be compelled to ratify international agreements that protect workers. African countries also need to look more closely into the well-being of their citizens who are forced to go and work in countries which practice this kind of modern-day slavery. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the Sankofa Pan-African series channel. Like our videos and please share them with your contacts.